can you hear it? The hustle and bustle of a busy city teeming with life. People coming from everywhere. Entrepreneurs and school teachers, government officials and sports stars, artists and media houses, all joining in to drive the powerful, pulsating culture that moves a nation. This is the landscape of a city. And this is where we start our journey. Armed with faith to reach the lost, a love that can heal the pain, and a loving hope ready to restore the brokenness of cities around the globe. Doxadeo is a family on mission, ready to see the earth filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Hey everyone, welcome home. This is Doxodeo Church Online. You are not here by mistake. We believe God has a great plan for each one of our lives. We are so excited you decided to jump in and join us. Celebrations are always a time where we gather for an inspiring time of worship, a message from the Bible that is personal, powerful and practical, and there is always a special time of ministry. So. Whether you are watching on our website, your TV apps, Facebook, or you're catching up on YouTube, we want to encourage you to make the most of watching online today. So here are a few tips on how you can do just that. Church is always better together. Grab any other people in your house. I mean, roommates, parents, kids, you can watch it together. It's so much better that way. If there is no one around, you could FaceTime or call someone else who is watching it and you can virtually sit together. This is just one way to stay in community with others. More on that to come. Okay, second, interact with the message. If you hear something you like, you say, Amen. Take notes, participate like you normally would, even discuss it afterwards with someone who also watched the celebration with you. There will be a time in the celebration to worship with your giving and ways to let us know how we can pray and care for you. Okay, so celebration is about to start. Now is the time to gather your family and friends, turn up the volume and get your coffee ready and get ready for church. We'll see you soon.
Hey, Doxodeo.Church. Um, it's such a joy to welcome you to today's celebration. Welcome home. We always use that little phrase, but it's not just something that we say because it's repetitive, because we really mean it. As the worship team was leading us in this song, um, See the Light, I had a portion of scripture that was just rolling around and mulling around in my heart that I'd love to read with you. And then we're going to pray right at the onset of today's celebration. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for your life. This portion comes from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, that says, Are you weary? Are you carrying a heavy burden? And so you need to answer that. If the answer to that is yes, then Jesus responds with a, an, an answer to that. He says, this is how you can address that. He says, come to me. I will refresh your life for I am your oasis. Simply join your life with mine. Learn my ways and you'll discover that I'm gentle, I'm humble and I'm easy to please. You will find refreshment and rest in me. I, I love that. It's an imperative. You know, when you come to Jesus, that's what you will find. My prayer is, is that as you come to the celebration today, we know that, you know, Jesus is not your mobile phone or your, uh, your laptop that you're watching on or your television. Jesus is in the moment. Jesus is with you in the room. And when we allow our hearts, our mind to focus on him, he says you will find refreshment and rest. And then he says for all that he requires of you, all of these things will be easy to bear and pleasant. And so before we do anything else in today's celebration, that's exactly what I want to do. I want to allow you for a moment just to let your mind, your thinking, your, your heart just gear itself towards the presence of Jesus right there where you are. And so Father, thank you that in this moment, uh, if people have come onto this celebration tired, maybe weary, perhaps challenged out of things that have happened this week, thank you that we can start off this moment by just, just relinquishing, just taking off, just putting the burden down, just allowing your spirit and your word, your presence to minister to our lives. Lord, I pray that we would leave this celebration differently to the way that we came into it. I pray that people that, that, that are part of our worship today, part of this celebration, that they would sense that things that have been carried with them for this week, perhaps difficult things, they've been left at the cross. We've left these things behind because your presence brings refreshing and renewal to us. And so through the word, through our time together. This is what I pray, Lord. May we see and hear of miracles, people who literally sense the pressure is lifting off them because of our togetherness around your word, around your spirit, around uh, our devices, but connected in hearts today in Jesus' name. I pray this. Amen and amen. So welcome to Church. Welcome home. It's great to have you here. If you're a first time visitor or this is the very first time that you've engaged this live stream, I want to extend a very warm welcome to you. Our hosts are standing by right now to chat with you. They're real hosts. They're not bots. They're in our chat box. They're saying hi. They're telling you how you can get connected. They're showing you ways in which they can pray for you today. If you press the prayer request button, it opens up a separate chat box. Look for the flashing light uh, and you'll see um, our, you, you, if you type into that, you're going to a private conversation with one of our, um, our hosts and they can pray for you. We'd love to pray with you. If you're watching this on Catch Up on our YouTube channel, a great way to connect in our prayer line is to email us at prayer at doxadale.church. Uh, we're going to pick up on that email and our team will pray over each and every email that we receive. Um, so please do that. I want to tell you or give you some uh, really good feedback that I've just sat, had on my table uh, during this last week. Um, in, in December, we as a church ran a Facebook campaign just letting people know about an upcoming Alpha course, which by the way started two Sundays ago and we've seen some great things happen in our Alpha course. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But because of this, you know, every month we run every day there are posts on our Facebook page, on our Instagram account, on our YouTube channel, things happen. And I wanted to give you some feedback on, on, on what's happening. Just in December, 
our Facebook page had 435,634 impressions. That's a huge number. That means that 435,000 times our posts showed themselves up on people's mobile phones or on their desktop through Facebook or Instagram. Of those 430,000, we had 17,710 engagements. People that actually engaged this post by liking, commenting, uh, or by uh, sharing. It's, it's a phenomenal amount of engagement we had. And then 13,378 people clicked a link either to sign up for the Alpha course or to our website or to one of our pages. That's another phenomenal amount of engagement. Our YouTube channel grew with over 20 subscribes just in January. So that means it pushed it over to 321 people that regularly engage through our YouTube channel. In our celebrations just in January, we had 379 devices that connected to our lives celebrations. Nine people, <laughs> nine people committed their lives to Christ during January. That means their lives in some other shape or form moved from uh, where they were into a place of discovering more about Christ in their own lives. At the moment, our Alpha course is running. Um, and I wish I had time to give you some detailed feedback about that. But God is doing something special in Botswana through our Alpha course and our connections there. The question is, how does all this happen? <laughs> That's a very good question. It all happens because of your giving. Your giving makes this possible. I want to tell you, if you've been partnering with Shireen myself, uh, with faith in your giving over the last number of months or since this church started about a year ago, I want to say thank you. But if you've been a part of this incredible journey and you perhaps have not yet partnered with us in this regard, this could be a really great next step for you in your faith and with your resources. And, and by doing this, all that we're doing is we're actually, by putting our resource together, by sowing into the kingdom of God, we're amplifying what God is doing even more. And that will enable us to make it clearer, to take it further, and to see God do more in global spaces with people's lives. And so I wanted to say thank you. I actually wanted to take a moment and just pray and just say thank you father for your goodness over us thank you that you've kept your hand over this ministry since it started and lord we want to continue partnering with you by giving and by releasing our faith as we do that thank you father that we know the seed must leave our hands but it will never leave our lives thank you that we can know that what you're doing through us us around our devices and through our giving is really deeply impacting people's lives all across the globe. For that, we give you thanks. And we say, Lord, would you give us courage to continue in faith, to continue with boldness in that which you have called us to do. And so we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you. Thank you for partnering with us in this way. Our, our year theme for 2022 is faith that reaches the lost. We as a team are asking ourselves, how can we encourage, embolden, inspire, and activate your lives, our lives together, to be carriers of faith, to take with boldness and courageous living, life-changing, eternity-bringing faith. How do we take that to the people around us, in our community, those who are in our lives, that have not yet discovered what Christ has done for them. And so from today and for the next number of weeks, um, we're going to make a clarion call on this in terms of our preaching. Um, and, and, it's, and it's a message that you can engage. So today, Jean is going to be ministering. And we're starting off our series called Following Jesus in Today's World. When Jesus spoke about this, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. He was saying to follow Jesus actually means also at the same time to fish. So let's go over to the word, open up your Bible, get your cup of coffee ready, 
and let's allow God's word to speak to us through John's life today. This is incredibly important here for us in Doxadeo. The reason for that is that we want to focus on the good news of the gospel of Jesus in regards to how you and I understand it, but also in how we present it. Would you read 2 Corinthians 5.14 with me, please? Christ's love compels us because we are convinced if one died for all, all have died. So the love of Christ has implications for the whole of humanity. There's a good news story that the rest of the world needs to hear. Let's read verse 15. He died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So it brings a new level of purpose in our lives. Verse 16 says then, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. What that actually means is that when I look at other people who do not live in relationship with God, how do I regard them? Not from a worldly or a human point of view, meaning looking at their behavior. I regard them from the potential that is in them when they are restored in a relationship with God. Verse 16 continues to say that though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, therefore, this important scripture, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come and the old has gone. The new is here. So today is an introduction to a couple of weeks where we want to talk about this particular scripture. What does it mean to be in Christ? What does it mean to be a new creation and to understand that the old has passed away? And then we also want to facilitate you on how to share that with other people. Now, verse 18 says, all of this is from God. The beauty of the gospel, the love for humanity, the restoration of people, and the opportunity to be restored into the fullness of the glory of God. It's from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. And here we go. And he gave this ministry of reconciliation to me, to you and me. I can immediately hear how some people say, John, but I, I'm not an evangelist. I am not one of those who actually go out into streets and evangelize people. Well, we are saying in this year that we want to show you how every one of us, part of the body of Christ, are part of an evangelism movement. And we have different contributions, but we need to understand each one of us are part of the ministry of reconciliation. What's that ministry? Verse 19 says, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. That's not where we focus. He has committed to us this message, this testimony of us being reconciled to him. And therefore, you and I are Christ's ambassadors, as though God is making his appeal through us. Obviously, we are the instruments of his good news to the people around us. So we implore you on Christ's behalf, live in this reconciliation, because God made him a new no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So I want you to just consider this idea that we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. It, it is a changed identity. Yes, in many instances, we are still growing into the reality and the maturity of that identity. And I know some people would often say, John, I'm not ready yet. I just want to sort out my life a little bit more. And then I will allow God to bring his message of reconciliation through me. Now, I want you to understand that the Lord is not waiting for us to be perfect before he can use our testimony. If you have 
any kind of encounter or experience with the reality of Christ, you already have a story. And that story can be a massive instrument of change in the life of somebody else. I want you to kind of reinforce that with me in your mind today. I have been given the message of reconciliation. I've been given the story, the testimony that God restores. And even though I'm not perfect, he wants to use this story. So when we talk about reaching people who are lost, what does that mean? What does it mean when the Bible says in Luke 19 verse 10 that the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost? The idea of lostness implies a couple of things. It implies that people are disconnected from God. It implies that people actually lost direction in life. It could imply, similar to the prodigal son, that there's destruction and devastation and people are broken and hurt. And if we talk about seeking and saving, then my testimony, my story, could be the one instrument that could touch somebody else's life that maybe a preacher of some sort couldn't reach. Every one of us are part of this whole reconciliation ministry. So there are three ideas in Doxodea that I want to share with you. And the first one is a fathering presence, and then a faithful presence, and then a fruitful presence. In this particular order, we believe that the first thing that must happen to you and me is the heart of our father, the devastation in the heart of a father whose son is lost. In Luke chapter 15, it gives us the story of the prodigal son. And you can just imagine what it would feel like if somebody had to lose a child. That's the heart of God for every person on this planet. A fathering presence is a prayerful presence. It is where before we testify and before we change the minds of people and we minister to them, it's where we begin to carry the burden of the Father on behalf of those who are lost. You know, sometimes I would look at sinful activity in the lives of for instance, uh, when, when you play a game of golf and you play with somebody who, who doesn't know God and you can just kind of see in how they talk and what they do, um, how they live outside of, of the design of the Lord for their lives. And often we would, we would see the activity or the, des the decision making and you would think to yourself, this person is a sinner. What we are saying now is a fathering presence goes beyond that. And just like a dad to his child, yes, my child is misbehaving, but I've got this burden and this love for this child, and I want to make sure that this child will flourish and grow. Let's read Romans chapter 9, where Paul is talking about something similar to this. He says, I tell the truth in Christ, I'm not lying. My conscience is bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and contempt continual grief in my heart for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for the sake of my brethren. Paul's disturbed in his spirit he seems willing to give everything to bring other people to see the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's the first dimension of our desire and our prayer for this season is that when you understand the new creation, that that will create somewhat of a burden in your heart for those who do not understand it yet. For those who do not have this new creation, this new thing, this goodness of God in their lives and who actually live in the implications of a broken fellowship, a disconnected, a lost, uh, bewildered, di directionless life, and maybe even a broken life. May the burden of the heart of God really capture our hearts as we look around what's happening in our cities. And may we understand that. There was a story uh, recently in, in one of our cities where there was a riot, and the leader of the riot ended up in prison. 
And I remember uh, a lady, a prayer warrior, talking about this particular uh, uh, male uh, uh, riot leader. And she said, you know, some of us just look at him and we see somebody who's destructive and who leads destructive activity. But here's the question. Think about that person who's in prison now. What does his mother say and feel about him? You know, that really made me think about the burdened heart of a parent for a child who's misbehaving. And I think that's the heart of our Father for everyone on this planet. May that burdened heart capture you and I. We cannot carry the message of a reconciliation before we understand the burden for reconciliation. And then from that platform of the love of God, God so loved the world that he sacrificed and gave his son. Then we want to talk about a faithful presence. What are we talking about? Why, John, are you taking me from prayer and a burden for the lost? Why are you taking me to the concept of living a faithful life? Well, here's the question. If people had to look at my life, and I'm testifying about the fact that I follow Jesus. Is there something in my life that would be attractive to them? It was incredibly interesting in the life of Jesus how attractive he was to notorious sinners. They felt comfortable in his presence. There was a desire to be with him. There was a desire to have what he has. You know, I, I'm asking the question, do people want what I have? Is there character in my life? You know, is there evidence in my life? And I said earlier, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I, I understand and I live from the perspective that the result of the gospel in my life is, number one, that I've discovered a relationship with God. And you will see the evidence of that if you look at my life. That relationship has brought shalom, wholeness, and peace in my heart. He came and he gave me life in abundance, joy and peace. And those are the things that people are asking. If I follow Jesus, what will that mean for me? What's the fruit in my life? The presence of God in my life is that the faithfulness of a relationship, the faithfulness of his work in my life, and the fact that I have direction. And when trouble comes, then it doesn't flaw me. There's an energy inside that makes me stronger. Those are the elements of the testimony of God's work in my life. Um, well, let, let's, let's read another scripture. 2 Corinthians 2 verse 14 says, Thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So the fragrance of the fact that I know God are these elements that I've just um, shown to you. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and those who are perishing. To the one we are an aroma of death and to the other one an aroma of life. I think that simply poses the question, my life, what is the aroma that people smell when they engage me? When I say that I follow Jesus, you know, I need to first look in the mirror and say, Lord, will you, will you lift the new creation inside of me to the level where it becomes attractive? And obviously that then takes us from a fathering presence, a burdened heart for the lost, number two, understanding the work of the gospel in my own life, to a fruitful presence where I now begin to bear the fruit of the gospel of Jesus in the lives of others. Every one of us have been called to make disciples. And every one of us, of us have a unique gifting and a way in which we interact with other people. So basically the question is, how do I take my faith to the world? And I just want to stop here for a moment and I want to challenge you. You know, sometimes we want to reach out to the lost because we have a message and we have a story. We have the story of Jesus and we want to tell them the story of Jesus. 
When you really love people, it actually maybe is a better idea to start with their story. I love it. I love just to ask people, tell me your story. Tell me some of the highlights of your life, what shaped you, what is important, what makes you laugh, what do you cry about. And then I would very often just take the liberty to ask them, what do you think about God and how does that play into your life? Focusing on their story so that you can get information on where the Lord will give you an open door to then tell your story and the story of Jesus Christ in your life. So before we take our faith into the world, we need to love the world to the extent that we want to facilitate them to discover what we've discovered. You know, we, we cannot convince people that Jesus is a reality. We can just testify to the fact that Jesus is a reality. There are different uh, levels of awareness in this world. So let's start. Maybe the first level is those who are totally unaware that there is a God. For some reason, they live with a worldview that, you know, that may, maybe reflects other convictions. So what we want to do with them is shift them from unaware to become aware of who God is. And you don't do that with Bible verses. They don't believe in the Bible. You do that with your own testimony. You do that with a story of how maybe you prayed and God answered prayers, of how you really know that sometimes things happen in your life because of a spiritual influence, unaware, shifting to awareness. So being fruitful in a, in a world where people are lost, I need to grow with my skills to facilitate that. Now, when people become aware of Jesus Christ, then the question is, how do I shift them to become interested in Jesus Christ? And again, your story, but also maybe the testimony of the people in the Bible would help them just to become interested. There are so many stories of atheists who know about Jesus, but they were not interested. And as they started reading and studying, maybe some of them, even with a departure point that I want to prove that there is no God, they actually became interested. And from there, they shifted to the point of saying yes to a relationship with God, of actually coming to faith. This is a journey, and as a, as a body of Christ, Doxodeo is dreaming that our skill set to bring the life of Jesus to our world will grow and that you will become an instrument of reconciliation, leading people to that point where they are reconciled to God, where that relationship is restored and they can follow Jesus and grow in discipleship. I love 1 Peter 3 verse 15 where it says that we need to be ready to give an account of the hope that is in us. So yes, I have hope and yes, I understand the gospel. I've received and experienced salvation and it has all of these elements of fruit in my life. The question is, am I ready to give an account? And, and do I have the right approach of how to facilitate others to that point? We uh, put a website together that is known as firststepswithjesus.com and we have 25 minute conversations in text and in video and in audio available on that website. And I want to challenge you to go and work through that material so that you can see how we facilitate other people into growing their relationship with God. Those are the first 20 conversations that I typically have with somebody who came to this point where they say, I now want to start with my relationship with God. So I want to, I want to take you to a challenging scripture in Romans 10 where it says, the word is near you, it's in your mouth, it's in your heart. Uh, and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So yes, that talks about salvation because you believe with the heart and you confess with your mouth. But now the scripture says uh, there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. It's the same Lord over all. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe if they haven't heard? How will they hear without a preacher? And how will somebody preach unless they are sent? We are taking you on a journey in the next couple of weeks 
to understand that you have been commissioned to share the good news of Jesus, to, to get people to hear. And as they hear, to come to this point of the awareness of who Christ is and to shift to a point of belief. And we trust that this will happen with the love of Christ that compels us so that this ministry will see a flood of salvation in the next season. I, I think I want to invite you into a moment of prayer now. And let's take everything that I've said and all the scriptures that we've read and let's just present that back in a prayer uh, as we pray, Lord Jesus, in your name, thank you for the new life that you gave us. But thank you, Lord, that it affects our hearts in such a way that we cannot keep it to ourselves. Will you open our hearts, open our minds, open our eyes to the burden that you have for the people that work around me, for the people that live around me. Just open my heart, Lord, to your burden for them. And then I pray, Lord, that you will open a door so that I can just share the good news of Jesus. Share it from my own testimony and maybe see how God works through me to bring people to a reconciled relationship with their Creator. We also pray for the whole of the movement of Doxadeo, this online campus, all of the physical campuses across so many cities. May this year be an incredible experience as you raise up faith in our hearts to reach the lost. And may it bring a flood of goodness to every part of our world. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. It's, it's all across the New Testament. It's, it's the pattern of the New Testament church. People heard the good news of the gospel. They, they discovered what Jesus had done for them. And then they told others around them about it. In their families, in their communities, they shared the same good news that they received. They shared there. Can I encourage you to follow Jesus is not just a reality for the disciples and the men and the women of the Bible. This is our reality. The question we have to ask ourselves is, how can you and I follow Jesus in today's world? Um, before we bring this celebration to an end, can I encourage you um, again to visit our website? There is some good information about connecting to Church. You can also follow our social media streams, our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and then Upside Daily Podcast obviously is running across all podcast uh, platforms, your favorite podcast panel, just uh, search Upside Daily and uh, you'll be able to connect with me or perhaps on Facebook. Um, there are some new episodes in this week coming, coming up and so a great way to connect with us. Um, I'd love to speak a blessing out over your life as we end today's celebration because uh, that's what I really desire. I desire that you be so blessed that your life runs over and spills over and takes that blessing into your place, your community, your family and your city. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you, church. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance over you and give you peace. Uh, now and evermore, God bless you. Looking forward to connect with you next week. Live blessed. Space.
Your face.